Welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we discuss knives for city dwellers. Today, we're going to have a look at two heavyweight multi-tool folding knives. The first is the Victorinox Swiss Soldier, which is a large 111mm Swiss Army knife. The other is by a company called Sanren Mu, or if we anglicize it, Sanren Mu, which is what a lot of people call it, so we'll just call it that. This is the model 9019. Both of these knives have similar functions, which is why I'm having a look at them together. While these knives could be urban EDCs or everyday carries, I'm looking at them from the perspective of outdoor use, whether you're hiking or camping. I wanted one of these knives as my secondary folder to my fixed blade for hiking and bushcrafting. At the end of the video, I'll tell you which one I picked. First, let's check out the knives. Let's open up the Victorinox first. So this is the old packaging. The new packaging all comes in a clear plastic kind of a product packaging. This is the traditional silver box. And this is the Swiss Soldier. The other knife by Sanren Mu. This comes in this blue also cardboard box. But there is a tray which you can open up. And there you have the knife over here. I deliberately chose both knives to be in green. The Swiss Soldier only comes in this color scheme. Uh, for the Sunrun Moon knife, you can get it in this kind of a olive uh, colored green, or you can get them in a, a maroon. So these are the two knives. They are similar in size. This is visibly larger. It is also heavier. But if you actually look at the specs, this is not much bigger than this in terms of dimensions. Uh, the weight is slightly heavier, but not in terms of dimensions. But visually, and just how it feels, this feels much bigger. Now, both of these knives can be deployed with one hand. This uses this uh, kind of a spider core spidey hole, uh, where you can open up the blade. The blade itself is partially serrated as well. Uh, for the Sun and Moon, you have two options. You have the thumb stud, which you can use to flick it open, or you also have the flipper tab over here. And you can see the blade for the Sun Moon is much larger than the Swiss Soldier. Now, we'll get to the specs of both of these knives in just a bit, but let's just compare them uh, with some knives that you might know. First, let's have a look at the Spyderco Parrot 3. That's how it stacks up considerably larger. And let's have a look at a regular medium-sized Swiss Army knife. Obviously, these knives would dwarf the regular Swiss Army knife. Let's have a look at the Buck Sprint Select. This is a larger knife. I also think this is a great outdoor knife as well. And let's have a look at the Cold Steel Airlight Tanto. And that kind of matches up, as you can see. Of course, this is a different blade style. And finally, as always, an Altoids tin. Let's first have a look at the specs for the Victorinox Swiss Soldier knife. Now, this is a Swiss make pocket knife with 10 functions. The handles are synthetic. They're made from dual density injection molded polyamide. This knife is used by the modern Swiss Army and was first issued in 2008. So let's look at some specifications. The blade length is 95 mm long or 3.74 inches long. The closed length is 101 mm or 4.37 inches. And the overall length is 197 mm or 7.76 inches. So the thickness of this knife, and I think that's quite important for these multi tools, the overall thickness of this is 11 mm, uh, which is 0.71 inches. And the weight for this is 130 one grams or 4.64 ounces. As mentioned earlier, the blade is serrated about two thirds at the front, and then it's uh, got the straight cut right here at, towards the end. It is sharp of the box, but this is a chisel grind, meaning it's only ground on one side over here. So most times you might see actually the front as a straight edge, and then you get the serrated edge, but this is kind of flipped. But I think this works actually pretty well as an outdoor knife. You have two different uh, blade types or the finishes for the blade. So actually you could use it for different tasks. So for example, if you needed kind of a more fine blade for feather sticking or cutting, you know, doing fine work, you have that. But if you want to cut through rope, cordage, or even uh, maybe uh, small branches, you could just use this. 
So the metal itself. Now, Victorinox does not officially advertise the composition of the alloy, but the understanding within the community is that this is EN 1.4110. Now, over the years, they've perfected the heat treatment to achieve an average hardness of HRC 56 in the Rockwell hardness scale. Now, it's interesting to note that the other tools in this Swiss Army knife and Swiss Army knives in general do not use the exact same steel. For example, the slip joint springs use EN 1.4021. Now, this particular knife, and I'll get to the lock in just a bit, has a saw. And generally for Victorinox, uh, saws and metal files, they are further enhanced with a hard chromium plating so they can cut through iron as well as steel. So let me just go through some of the uh, various hardness of the different tools from Swiss Army knives. So the blade as mentioned is HRC 56. For the metal file, wood saw, scissors and nail file, it's HRC 53. The bottle opener, can opener, screwdriver and the awl, that's HRC 52. And the internal springs, rivets, and corkscrew, if there's one, uh, is HRC 49. So really different hardness uh, for different features or different tools and components of this particular knife. But back to this particular blade. So as mentioned, it is one hand opening and there is a liner lock. But this liner lock uh, doesn't push off to the left, uh, which is standard for a lot of normal locking knives this goes off to the right so maybe it's good for a left-hander if they want to do a one-handed close i'm not a left-hander but that's how you do it if you're right-handed and open it with one hand to close it you'd kind of need to use two hands or you may want to press it against a surface to close it like that it does have a saw as i showed earlier uh, this does not have a lock, uh, but this is actually a great saw and you can cut through reasonably thick branches, 1.5 inches to 2 inches. It's not a problem. Now, we also have a flathead screwdriver and a cap lifter, and this has a liner lock on it as well. And you can push that to the right as well to close that. And we also have a can opener and a smaller flathead screwdriver over here and this does not have a liner lock and on this side we have a phillips head screwdriver in place of the traditional corkscrew and we also have the awl over here so these are all the tools in this uh, particular knife that isn't the toothpick or the tweezers in this particular set of scales well now let's have a look at the sunren mu let's have a quick look at the specs of the sunren mu 9019 so the blade length is 82 mm or 3.2 inches long. The closed length is 121 mm or 4.76 inches long. The overall open length is 203 mm or 8 inches long. The thickness of this knife is 19 mm or 3 quarters of an inch. And it's actually only 1 mm thinner than the Swiss Soldier, even though this looks so much thicker. The blade thickness is 3mm thick, so this is a really solid blade. The blade thickness for the Swiss Soldier is 2mm, so definitely a small sizable blade for this. The overall weight is 180 grams or 6.35 ounces, so it's 50 grams heavier than the Swiss Soldier. And by that's of course because of the hardware and the blade, which is a drop point style blade. It's got a hollow grind, there's a nice swedge over here. Uh, there's no jimping over here, but there is kind of a curve so that you can put your thumb. There is a sharpening choil over here and kind of a finger guard because of the flipper tab. Let's talk about the blade steel. The steel is Sandvik 12C27. The steel is manufactured by Sandvik AB, a Swedish company. It is one of the steel grades under the Sandvik family consisting of 14C28N. 12C27, which is this steel, is a stainless steel. It offers excellent wear resistance, corrosion resistance, and high hardness, all properties that make a good knife steel. Now, what's more, unlike other high chromium steels that are difficult to sharpen because of the hard chromium carbides, 12C27 steel attains an edge very fast. Now, the Sandvik 12C27 steel is considered a Swedish low-end steel and is often compared to the Chinese 8CR13 MOV. So this is a decent blade for this kind of knife, especially at this size. It is 
also a locking blade this has a liner lock and is more traditional in the sense that it moves off to the left over here as you can see now the handles are g10 as mentioned you can get them in two different colors it's got quite a good uh, grip there is a textured grip with a cross hatching sort of design over here there is a pocket clip not reversible uh, in one position over here and not deep carry as well let's look at the other features of this knife there is the saw now the saw is actually bigger than the Swiss soldier. It's about the same thickness uh, and I have not field tested this uh, yet, uh, but I believe it will do a, a decent job similar to the Swiss soldier. Now the great thing about this particular knife is there is also a lock for the saw. So there is a liner lock over here as well, which we can push off to the side. And for the liner lock, you have to push it to the left as well. Now there is a, uh, Two more tools over here there is this flathead screwdriver with a cap lifter and we also have on this side over here a phillips head screwdriver and a can opener and finally over here we do have a lanyard holder as well as a glass breaker i'm not sure how much glass breaking i'll be doing in the jungle but that is there so this is the sun remove 9019. Let's do a comparison between both knives now and uh, let's have a look at the pros and the cons. So there are several differences between these two knives. Uh, definitely I think the most obvious are the blade types and the blade size. The Sunrun Mo is definitely a heftier knife. It is uh, it, it is bigger, it is chunkier, even though the dimensions may not be that far off from the Swiss soldier. So knife styles, very different. The thickness different, as mentioned, this is 2mm, this is 3mm. And the next thing that I think we should look at besides the main blades is the saw. Now for the saw, it's actually pretty easy to lift up the saw for the Sun and Moon. For the Victorian Knox, you have to try to get your fingernail in there. So it's just I guess less pronounced you need to try to get in there to lift it up and here you can see the difference between the saw sizes so quite significant right over there so i'd assume this might even do a better job in sawing through uh, thicker pieces of wood and as mentioned this does have that liner lock over here uh, to release the saw which is a great feature now, the one positive thing about uh, the Swiss Army knife, I think, is really the size of their other tools, such as the uh, Phillips or the flathead screwdriver here and the smaller flathead, the can opener and the bottle cap opener here. So it's, it's, it's really, I guess, proportionate, in my opinion, uh, to the rest of the knife. And it's, it's nice and big, nice and solid. Of course, as mentioned, this, of course, has that liner lock. Compare that to this knife. Now, this knife looks bigger, looks heftier. But when it comes to these screwdrivers, bottle cap and can openers, it just looks so puny. And I don't really understand the decision uh, to go with such a puny looking small, you know, supporting feature in such a big knife. I feel that's a bit of a letdown. I would really have preferred if they had a sizable uh, tool for both of these items. But maybe you could get into your gear with smaller items uh, if you need. But let me know what you think. Do you think that these tools over here are a bit small in proportion to the rest of the knife? Uh, just from a design perspective and just aesthetically visual uh, look, I think it's just a bit too small in my opinion. So here we get the great quality as you expect from Swiss Army knives. Again, line and lock over here. And of course, on this side, there are no tools. All you get is really the liners and the back of the knife. And here, of course, you have that uh, Phillips head screwdriver and the awl. So that's the main two differences, slight differences in size, definitely difference in the blade, the saw and the size of the tools as well. Now, let me tell you which knife I picked as my outdoor EDC. First, a bit of context. I go hiking or bushcrafting in the jungle at least two to three times a week. I might go for a day hike or spend the day bushcrafting in my bushcraft camp, which I'm setting up. I have a variety of tools with me, including a fixed blade, saw, and a hatchet. However, I wanted a folding knife that would act as my secondary knife. And this folder will be put in my jungle survival micro pouch, this one right over here. 
Incidentally, I will be doing a review of this survival pouch very soon. So for my secondary folder, both knives actually have all the features I want. The main blade, saw and screwdrivers. But I finally decided on the Swiss Soldier as my secondary folder as it's slightly more compact and lighter. Weight of gear for hiking and bushcrafting is always a concern, so the lighter the better. But here's another reason why I chose the Swiss Soldier and that is because I treat this as a backup knife. It is my secondary folder. I have a fixed blade which is much bigger than the, the blade that this has. I have a saw which is much bigger than this saw. So I do not need you know, my secondary folder to be matched up to my primary tools. So I didn't need, I guess, such a big heavy duty knife. I could go with this to fit in my survival pouch. Having said that, if I were to go on a hike or a camp and I could not take any tool except one, so no fixed blade, no saw, saw no hatchet, then I'll definitely go with the Sunrim Moo as it is beefier and will work better as a primary knife and saw compared to the Swiss soldier. But what do you think? Which would you choose as an outdoor EDC or secondary folder? Or do you have a completely different knife to recommend? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, such as the review of my jungle survival pouch, which is coming up, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. And as usual, keep it folded, keep it safe.